Why don't you just give him the liberty to turn loose and be what God wants him to be tonight? How many of you going to let this man of God speak into your heart whatever God has laid upon him to say? Brother Urshan, come and preach. Let's give God a high praise as he comes to minister tonight. Let's lift our hands and let's give thanks unto the Lord right now. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for your spirit that's in this house right now. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for what you've already done. You've blessed us thus far, Jesus. We give you glory tonight. We give you glory. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we love you. What a beautiful spirit. What a beautiful atmosphere. Doesn't it feel good to be apostolic? Praise God. I have learned some things this week. I've learned some things. I've learned that we can articulate doctrine and we have the purest, most distilled doctrine. And we don't need to be ashamed of anything that we believe. I've learned that we got to be careful what field we're in. And I've learned that sometimes we got to sit in the corner and contemplate while we build our whip. And I've learned that Pueblo knows how to have church. If you guys would just worship, we'd get somewhere around here. <laughs> My, 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 what, an, what, a, what a beautiful move of the Holy Ghost is here already. Amen. And it's my privilege and it's my honor to be with you. Thank you, uh, Brother Elder, for extending the invitation to me to come and minister and trusting your pulpit uh, to me tonight. And I've, I'm following great men of God. I'm following men that are, uh, have laid foundations and men who are building right now. Uh, very dynamic churches and I'm just glad to be here worshiping the Lord with you and lifting my hands it's good to be with God's people it's good to be able to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth hallelujah hallelujah well if you have a Bible I'm gonna invite you to go ahead and turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 20 Genesis chapter 20 and this is my first time here in Pueblo um, I am alone here this trip. I couldn't bring my beautiful wife and my two children, Joseph and Ben's, who are listening on Holy Ghost Radio right now. Love you guys. Daddy will be home in the morning to make breakfast for you. Praise God. Genesis chapter 20 and verse 1. If you've got it, say amen. amen. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country. And dwelled between Kadesh and Shur, and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, Thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and 
and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Verse 17, so Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children, for the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. There are challenges that come to every person who's going to follow in the footsteps of Abraham. And if you're going to be a son and a daughter of Abraham, you're going to experience the things he experienced. By the help of God tonight, I want to try to articulate some of those things. I want to share some things I think will help you in your walk with God by God's grace. I want to preach to you a message I have entitled, She's Not My Sister, She's My Wife. She's not my sister, she's my wife. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. <clears throat> I believe that <clears throat> the apostolic church is the church. I don't believe it's a church. I don't believe it's one, one among many. If you're here, if you're listening on the radio, get, get this entire week downloaded into your iPod. Put it in your iPhone. Put it in your computer. Play it MP3. Burn it on a CD. Whatever you got to do. Put it on an 8-track if that's all you got. And listen... Because throughout the course of this week has been a thread woven about what it means to be apostolic, what it means to remain apostolic. I hope that a younger generation can hear the voice of Bishop Wilson. I hope you can hear it. I hope you can get it. I hope you can take it in and metabolize it and break it down. Because you heard the word of God. I heard the word of God. And there are things that come across this pulpit that are so beautiful. And that are so powerful. So profound. Um, the fact that we are God's people has led some to think that we're elitist. Or that we're arrogant. That we are somehow condemning other people. I, I don't believe God gave us a condemning message. There is condemnation to those who don't believe, but I don't believe the message is a condemning message. God focuses on faith. God focuses on life. Um, just because... Um, he says something that is true doesn't mean he wishes evil on any person. He's not willing that any should perish, one writer said. Um, it's kind of like sunshine, you know. When sunshine comes, it's good. I, I, I'm a lover of sunshine. My mood fluctuates with sunshine. And you can enjoy the brightness of sunshine, but... In that brightest of sunshine, there will always be a shadow cast that is unavoidable. And such is every person that chooses to embrace the truth. Anytime you embrace truth, the de facto side of it, the other side of the coin is, if you don't, there will be consequences. God focuses on positive things. He says that, except a man is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He focuses on the fact that we can be born of the water and born of the Spirit. He could have said it another way. He could have said, if you're not born of the water and Spirit, you're going to hell. But he didn't do that because God is a God of love. He's a God of compassion. He's a God that wants 
to reach for that which is good. So we're not trying to be elitist tonight. We're just chasing after the truth. We're just chasing after what's right. I can't help it that I love that I'm baptized in Jesus' name. That is the truth. I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just telling you, this is the truth. Amen. The Bible said that Noah built an ark to the saving of his house. His point was building the ark to the saving of his house. He, his motive for undertaking the building of the ark was the saving of his house. The pounding of every nail. The placing of every plank. The building of the frame. The whole point is the saving of his house. But the Bible says in building it, he condemned the world. We're not here to condemn anybody. We're here to tell you that this is the truth. This is the real deal. This is the Holy Ghost. This is the church of the living God. Hallelujah. This is, you've come to the spirits of just men made perfect. To God, the judge of all. Hallelujah. The general assembly of the church and the firstborn which are written in heaven, hallelujah, to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. This is the church, and I'm glad to be part of the church. Amen. Uh, following closely on that revelation that a man can be God's man, we can be God's people, comes the revelation that, that God is who he is, and he is so without apology. God is great. And our worship tonight is not appeasement. It's not buttering him up. Our worship is in order because it is saying and calling that which is. We, we don't like it when people try to be something they're not because something inside of us knows that they're not that great. Arrogance is not a character trait of God. God doesn't have arrogance. God is it. Arrogance and pride and, and high self-esteem and thinking you're something great. Something inside of us recoils back from that because, because we don't like it. We know that I, I, sir, I know you put your pants on just like I put my pants on in the morning, and I know your hair's messed up in the morning just like mine is, and we all got problems, and we all got situations. And when somebody walks in thinking and acting like they have everything and they are God's gift to the world, something inside of us says that's arrogant, that's proud, we don't like that, that's not right, and we call that arrogance. And people should not lift up other people above that which they are supposed to be because it's not man's place to do that man cannot occupy that position but god is worthy of all praise he does not take that which is not his glory belongs to god glory when he says praise me because i'm worthy he really is worthy when he says there's none beside me, it's not a boast. There is none beside him. You're giving him his due. You're placing things in order. You are putting him in the rightful position. He's not bragging that he's the alpha. He is the alpha. He's not bragging that he's the omega. He is the omega. He's not trying to be something he's not. God is that. And worship is placing him in his rightful place. So God occupies his rightful place, and God's people occupy their rightful place when he chooses them. There are a people of God. And it's not arrogance, it's blessedness to be the people of God. When God looked at Abraham and he said, I will be your God. I, I need the weight of that to settle on somebody. Because out of the millions of other people that walked the earth at that time, God said, you are not. He is. The real estate that his sandal stood on was blessed. When, when you do something, Abraham, it's not like when somebody else does something. My favor is on you. 
the weight of eternal favor came down upon one man's shoulders. Your enemies will be my enemies. The man that blesses you, I'll bless him. The man that curses you, I'll curse him. I will go with you. I will be with you. I will be your God. Through thee, not through anybody else, but through thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. I'm going to put my grace on you. I'm going to put my covering over you. You're going to be my anointed. I'm going to... You can say you're arrogant, you can say you're proud, you can say you're elitist all you want to, but I'm telling you, there's nobody but Abraham that is the repository on earth for God's power and God's glory and God's revelation on earth at that time. Abraham is my man. So Abraham's wife isn't like anybody else's wife. That's the wife of my friend. That's the wife of the anointed. Abimelech could have chosen any other woman, but you had to choose Abraham's wife. When you touched her, Abimelech, you messed up, Bubba. <laughs> Out of all the places and all the people you could have picked, you picked her. And when you, when you came against Sarah, you came against Abraham. When you came against Abraham, you came against me. My purpose is wrapped up in that man. I've already got plans for his kids. I've got plans for his grandkids. And those plans, Abimelech, don't involve you. There's going to be people come out of him that are going to change the course of this planet. Wars are going to be fought over Abraham's land. Let me just bring it on home. There's going to be some people in Pueblo, Colorado, Colorado in 2012 that are going to be dancing and praising and worshiping. And if you get involved, Abimelech, that doesn't happen. So get your hands off my man. Thou art but a dead man. Praise God. I believe God's people occupy a good place. I believe that they occupy an exalted place. Not by virtue of them, but by virtue of our great and mighty God. Hallelujah. I, I, I think that a lot of the fear that Abraham encountered and a lot of the fear that we encountered comes from a lack of awareness of who we are. I believe on the macro scale... God did all of this for us. What I mean by that is creation was made for us. The aloneness of cosmic life, God said, I want another that can perceive and see and think, have sentience. To be aware that I am great. The Bible said that God, God created all things by him and for him. So what I mean by that is that you go to the furthest reach of the cosmos. They tell me there's a star by the name of Betelgeuse. There's a star by the name of Andromeda. There are galaxies. There's Crab Nebula. There's, I don't know, big stuff. Hubble's looking at it and seeing lights that burned out, I don't know how many years ago, and they're just now reaching us. God put the furthest star out there. Follow me on this. I have a very odd mind. To hold the next star in place, to hold the next star in place, to hold the next star in place, and on and on and on and on and on until it comes to our star. I got to hold all that in an intricate balance that if one's off, it all goes off. He balances it. So, and, and, and he creates the sun at just that mass, at just that size, so that 
Uranus stays there, Neptune stays there, Jupiter stays there, and they balance it, and Mercury and, and all of the different planets stay there so that Earth can stay there at this exact distance. And God, when he, the architect of heaven, put it in place, he said, I can't put it straight forward. i got to tilt it just a little bit so the sun's rays hit it at just such an angle. And i got to put clouds above, and i got to put water beneath because I need an atmosphere. And I need an atmosphere because I need them to breathe. And I need them to breathe because I need them to praise. I did all of that and 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 that so that everything that had breath might praise the Lord. I need him to stand up on two feet and say, I see it. I'm aware of it. I declare it. I clap my hands. I stomp my feet. I leap for joy. Let everything, let everything, let everything that had breath praise ye the Lord. He didn't give you that breath to curse him. He didn't give you that breath to lie. He didn't give you that breath to gossip. He didn't give you that breath to smoke. He gave you that breath to praise him. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the place we hold in creation. Praise God. I believe what we're doing right now is perfectly in order. I believe heaven's spotlight is on this building right now. Amen. You can be seated. I believe God made bumblebees to pollinate flowers. I can go all night on this. To pollinate fruit trees and... Uh, Make sure trees grow so carbon dioxide can be there so it can soak up the stuff that we put out, carbon dioxide, and we can breathe oxygen so we can praise God. I believe all of that creation is by him and for him. So when Abraham walked into Abimelech's land, he forgot his place. And he was afraid. Now before I talk about Abraham's fear, can I talk about what am Abimelech liked because Abimelech looked upon Sarah and liked her and the world will look upon God's church and will like it or will like it to a degree they will want the benefits they'll want the beauty They'll want what they perceive as the stuff that can benefit them. Not understanding that the good stuff that's in Sarah is just a reflection of the God that she serves. I had a young man in my church. Came out of a rough environment. And I, very rough. Gang lifestyle. Wicked lifestyle came to church God baptized him with the Holy Ghost he was baptized in Jesus name he served the Lord he began to embrace holiness he began to learn the doctrine he loved God he was a single young man and years passed and in his serving the Lord he grew a little lonely and and somewhere along the way a young lady not in church not serving God cast her eyes upon him and she saw good stuff she saw a faithful young man. She saw a hard-working young man. He didn't run the streets. He, he, he didn't lie. He didn't drink. He didn't do drugs. Uh, he hadn't been involved in criminal activity for a very long time. This is looking better and better and better. And so as the world cast their eyes upon this young man, they said, I want that. And they grabbed a hold. She grabbed a hold of this young man. What well, She wound up using wiles and seduction, and he became disobedient. He fell into sin with her. And they got together. And uh, it wasn't too long after that I got a phone call 
in the middle of the night, the girl is sobbing, and she said, please come, preacher. He beat me. He, he hurt me. I went over there. There it was, domestic violence. She's injured. He's pacing the floor in a rage. He had quit coming to church like he used to. He hadn't been to prayer meeting in a long time. Um, the world can look upon the things of the church and love the benefits of the church, but they have to understand how those benefits got there. She said, I need you to fix him and make him right, Pastor Urshan. I said, girl, when you came in the picture with the sin that you brought, you destroyed the very thing that made him what he was. You can't have the benefits of Abraham with through Abimelech's ways of doing things. You can't look at the perceived benefits and say, I want it, and not live the life, and not pay the price, and not have the covenant. You cannot have Sarah's beauty and throw away Sarah's covenant. You cannot... The world wants what we have, but they don't want to pay the price that we pay. I'm telling you. So the world will step in and they will try to grasp what they do not understand. The church is not, hey, the church is beautiful. When you serve God, you won't have a criminal record. When you serve God, you won't be a pervert. When you serve God, you won't run around on your wife. And you won't run around on your husband. And you won't abandon your kids. And you'll be the Abrahamic promise of old will come upon you. Wherever you put your foot, I'll give it to you. There are promises in God's church. You'll have peace of mind. You're not going to be struck out strung out with medication you're not going to be a drunkard you're not going to be a drug abuser you're not going to be running and carousing and gambling you're not going to be doing that it's the church it's a protected environment it's a city set on a hill it's it's the church it's the church it's the church the church is beautiful but the world can't look at the beauty and the benefits and not understand the covenant that made it beautiful. Behind the benefit, there's a repentant altar. There's a blood-stained cross. There's a watery grave of baptism in Jesus' name. An insistence on the name of Jesus. Tongue talking fire falling chain breaking <laughs> baptism of the holy ghost day of pentecost church 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 and more church prayer meetings daily bible study don't take away the things that make me holy don't take away the things that make me who i am if you want the benefits you got to pay the price it's something abimelech doesn't understand So that's how the world views the church. Abraham was afraid. He was afraid of Abimelech's advances. He was afraid of what the world was going to do. And in doing so, he forgot who he was. He forgot the position he occupied. The aloneness of being God's anointed got to him. And he said, I, I, could, I could lose my life over this. And so he created a half-truth. And he, he downgraded what he really was. I'm afraid you're going to look at me funny. If you know how close I am to her. You know, when God chose to display his relationship to his people, he could have used sisterhood. He could have used brotherhood. He could have used any human relationship. He could have used any type of relationship. But when he chose to reveal the way he would deal with his people, he said, it'll be as a bridegroom rejoiceth in his strength. The Bible says that 
A man is to love his wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. It could have been a sibling relationship, but when, when, when the prophet put pen to paper and wrote the Song of Solomon, it wasn't a platonic relationship. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a physical example of how I'm going to be with my people. There's going to be an intimacy. There's going to be a closeness. There's going to be a love bond. There's going to be something that makes it special. You're going to become one. You're going to be together, and that's the example of how I'm going to be with my people. Abraham looked out and said, if they ever figure out how serious I am with her, they could kill me. You can't ever be ashamed of what makes you what you are. You can't ever backpedal for Abimelech. You got to stand up to Abimelech and say, yeah, that's right. She's mine. I'm hers. And you're going to have to deal with it. This is, let me translate into 2012. That's right, I am one God. I am Jesus' name. Yes, I talk with tongues. Yes, I'm holy. I dress holy. I don't go certain places. I don't do certain things. I'm not holding it at arm's length. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not fearful. I'm apostolic. And that's what it's all about. The beauty that you see is the apostolic beauty. The, the beauty that you see is Jesus' name beauty. The blessing that you see comes from the one God covenant. Have you ever heard of the beauty of holiness? That's what this is all about. Don't look at her beauty and not understand where it comes from. You don't get virginity until marriage by playing church. You don't get a clean conscience by lip service. You're going to have to go to the altar, brother. You're going to have to go into a watery grave. You're going to have to be baptized with the gift of the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself. You're going to have to be a man of faith. You're going to have to get a hold of this thing. Praise God. You can be seated. The backpedaling happens when people begin to fear for their life. What's it going to cost me? If I preach one God, am I going to offend somebody with lots of money? If I preach holiness, are my young couples going to go to the church that doesn't? Am I going to downplay my relationship with my beloved to try to skate by and try to get some kind of an underhanded pass? You know, you can't hold the truth at arm's length. Uh-uh. The truth is the most beautiful thing in the world. The truth will make you free. Don't play around with the truth. Don't compromise the truth. The Bible describes the relationship that God's people throughout time have had with truth. And, and it says that they saw the promises afar off. And then it says they were persuaded. And then it says they embraced them. Uh, so to, to the point where when the scripture says that if you don't have a love for the truth, that God would send you a strong delusion. And you would believe a lie. I will tell you tonight, Pueblo, Colorado, that it's not enough to know the truth. It's not enough to be acquainted with the truth. It's not enough to flirt with the truth. 
Agrippa looked at Paul and said, almost thou persuadest me. Almost thou persuadest me. I, I didn't come for almost. I didn't come to get close and flirt and wink and then dance away. I came to get my arms around this thing and pull it in tight. This is not a platonic relationship, brother. This is a marriage. This is for better and for worse. This is in sickness and in health. This is for richer and for poorer. This is... Somebody needs to get your arms around Sarah and say she's not my sister. She's my wife. I, I'm intimate. I'm close. I got, I'm, I'm wrapped in an embrace with the truth. The old song says I'm wrapped up. I'm tied up. I'm tangled up in Jesus. I, I got this thing and I can't let go. Somebody get your hands around the message. Get your hands around the doctrine. Get your arms in an embrace, in a death grip. Praise God, you can be seated. God will prove out what you are. Truth is so beautiful. Not only does it set you free, it works on the opposite end too. Even when it hurts, truth is good. I don't get upset when people compromise and leave truth. Because one writer said they went out from us because they were not of us. It said that God would send them strong delusion. Who? God. Would send them strong delusion. Because they believe not, that they receive not a love of the truth. You don't want somebody hanging around that doesn't love the truth. You don't want them bogging your church service down. You don't want them contaminating your young people. You don't want them giving the preacher problems. You don't want them sitting back there with arms folded. Backsliders think they're the ones that leave. They're not the ones that leave. They, God uses their arrogance against. The Bible says that he takes the wise in their own craftiness. Hallelujah. They'll think they're leaving the whole time. I, I, I read in my Bible where the Lord looked at one of his angels and said, Who shall go down and deceive Ahab? And one said this and one said that and one said the other. And an angel stepped up and said, I'll go down. I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. And, and God said, Go down and prosper. That spirit came down and was a lying spirit. And it tickled Ahab's ears. Ahab thought he made the decision. But God had set a trap. And he took the what? They think they're so smart they wrap themselves up like a foot soldier they hide out and they play games with God thinking they're getting away you're not getting away with anything God will use your arrogance against you and he'll yank you out of the church all the while you think you're doing it and God is just separating the wheat from the chaff God will send some compromising situation your way to crowbar you out of the church because he knows you don't love him. The truth works that way too. Praise God. I serve a great God. I serve a great God. I serve a God that saves at the front and he saves at the backside too. That's why he is the Alpha and the Omega. He's got both sides under control. Has anybody figured out that he gets glory on both sides? Oh yeah, he gets glory from the righteous and he gets glory from the sinners too. Moses, I'm going to give you glory because I'm going to bring you out with a high hand. And Pharaoh, I'm going to get glory off of you too. Because when I get done with you, boy, this whole city is going to be in shambles. And the nations will tremble at the name of Jehovah God. I'll... The vessel of righteousness brings glory. And the vessel of wrath fitted to destruction, it brings me glory too. Glory belongs to God. That's how truth operates. That's how truth works. You're trying to hang on to them and God's saying, I'm trying to get them out of here. Had a young lady, 
She said, Lord, I need you to have your way in my life. I need you to set me free. I need you to help me out. Two weeks later, her boyfriend left her. And she said, Pastor Urshan, I don't know what I'm going to do. My boyfriend left me. The devil's attacking me. I said, uh-uh, honey, that ain't the devil. That's God. God took that big-headed boyfriend and pulled him right out of your life. You prayed the prayer. Now you take the blessing. I know it's painful, but let the truth work, honey. Let the truth work. Let light separate from darkness. Let the... I'm telling you, you're in a powerful church. You're in a Holy Ghost church. You're in an anointed church. Get a hold of it. Embrace it. Pull it in close. Get your hands on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. <laughs> if you're a hypocrite, God will bring you something that appeals to you. If you're a pig, God will bring you slop. If you're a dog, God will bring you vomit. The sheep won't go there because of the sheep, it's not food. And he said, My sheep hear my voice. But the pig and the dog swerve sideways. When you see that person that you love going to something they shouldn't go to, don't. Pray for them, love them, do the best you can. But if they're making their choice and they don't love God and they don't love this thing and they don't have the same love for truth that you do and they don't love the doctrine, let them go because it's manifesting what's on the inside of them. It's manifesting what spirit they're of. My God, have mercy. That's how great God is. That's how great God is. Amen. I got some more stuff. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Uh, the church works. The church is beautiful. The doctrine the Bible is, this is not, this is not thrown together. And, and you don't have any reason to be intimidated. Abraham had no reason to back up from Abimelech. Abraham had every reason to look at, a, when, when the Bible says that he looked at Abimelech and he blessed Abimelech and he helped Abimelech, the, the power was always in Abraham's hands. I, I just want to know if we know who we are. The Bible is filled with examples of people who didn't know who they were. An entire nation hides behind rocks and it takes a shepherd to come out and say, no, 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 we're not running away, we're running towards. Uh, an entire nation is, is fighting and running around and, 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 and a young prince looks at his armor bearer and gets a revelation and says, wait a minute. We're not like other armies. God's army is not like their army. Our army, God gives us trumpets and candles and pitchers. God gives us jawbones. God gives us women to lead the charge when the man's not man enough to do it. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. So he looks at his armor and says, I just got a revelation. There's no restraint with God to save by many or by few. In my Bible, it says that one will put a 1,000 to flight and two will put 10,000 to flight. God's army works on those principles. He's just looking on somebody to get a revelation of who they are. Wait a minute, I'm God's man. Wait a minute, I... One place said, though, and host should encamp against me and this will I be confident. While the host is around me, God has a host around the host. Gehazi quivers and the prophet's drinking lemonade. 
I'm afraid you forgot who you were for a second. You're Abraham's kids. The planets are in alignment so that you can praise him. David actually used it for his, for his benefit. You know, when you figure out what makes God tick, hallelujah, hallelujah. Some people thought throwing big offerings in the offering plate were what made God tick. And some people thought that, uh, you know, uh, doing different, one guy cut off a, an anointed man's head, thought that made God happy. He found out different. Different people have tried different things, but David got it. He realized when he woke up, he said, man, this ain't about me. This is about him. Let me explain what that means. He said, don't forgive me because I'm good because I'm not. But forgive me for thy name's sake. Lest the heathen rejoice against. Don't, don't let them tell it in Gath. Don't let them tell it in Ashkelon. Don't let them put you to a shame, God. One place David got his back up against a wall. He deserved to die. He knew he deserved to die. And he pulled out the ace that he'd been hiding in his sleeve. And he said, Lord, if I die, who shall praise thee? Don't get me out of it because I'm worthy, because I know I'm not. But if you kill me, who's going to write Psalms 23? Who's going to write Psalms 150? Who's going to write Psalms 119? So deliver me, and I'll praise you. Deliver me, and I'll sing. Deliver me, and I'll shout. I know what makes it work. Glory belongs to God. If you get me out, I'll praise you. <laughs> Practice that harp, David. Dance, David. Shout, David. This is what we do. This is what he wants. This is, this is who his people are. Somebody needs to get comfortable with who they are. Let me tell you how it works. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I can't go to a conference where they try to dumb it down. And they dress unholy. And they preach another doctrine. And they hold Pentecostalism at arm's length. And say, oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no, no. This, is a, this isn't so messy. This isn't so... Entangled. This isn't so, oh, no, no, you, you're a little too much into it. We, we have to be more academic. We have to be more wealthy. We, we're going to offend people if we dance like that. And if you talk in tongues, don't you be afraid of Abimelech when he walks up. Don't you say it's your sister. It's not your sister. And you know it's not your sister. It's your wife. You embrace her. You embrace her. You get a hold of the church. You get a hold of God's doctrine. You get a hold of Acts 2.38. You get a hold of the oneness of God. You get a... Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You got to get a hold of it. This is what we do. This is how we praise. This is how we sing. This is what works. This is what drives out the devil. This is what brings victory. This is what saves me. This is what saves my family. Come on, Abraham. Hang on to Sarah. You feel that right there? I want somebody to lift your hands right now and say, I'm one of Abraham's kids. Hallelujah. I didn't come to dumb it down. I didn't come to hold it at arm's length. I didn't come to act like I'm not Pentecostal. Come on, let it build, let it build from this side to the back, to the middle section, to the back, 
I want to know if I've got some of Abraham's kids that say, I know it was the blood. It might sound messy, but I know it was the blood. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. I'm sorry if that ain't slick enough for you. I'm sorry if that ain't sophisticated enough for you. I'm just a one God. Jesus' name, blood washed, sanctified, Holy Ghost healed, fire baptized. Child of God, child of God, come on Abraham, come on Abraham. Get your hands around the message. Get your hands around the doctrine. Get your hands around the worship. Don't try to sophisticate yourself into heaven. Don't try to figure your way into heaven. Honey, you're going to have to praise your way into heaven. (laughs) Hallelujah. Somebody's got to make up in your mind, this is how we do it. This is what works. This is what works. This is what works. Hallelujah. Are you Sarah's brother? Or are you Sarah's husband? Are you in a hands off? It's close, it's good, it's, there's love, there's, there's good stuff, but it ain't the real thing. Now this is a lot closer than that. If they ever figure out that I talk in tongues. Honey. The Bible said, whom shall I make to understand doctrine? Whom shall I teach truth? Them that are weaned from the milk, drawn from the breast. Line shall be upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. And if you do all that, then you you can accept Christ as your personal Savior. You can shake the preacher's hand and you can eat a cracker and some wine and... No, honey. If you get it line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, then with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people to whom he said, this right here, this right here, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Do you got the Holy Ghost? Do you have Jesus' name? Are you part of the church? Are you a praiser? Are you a worshiper? Yeah! I want somebody to break loose right now. I want somebody to break loose right now. Leap for joy. Speak in tongues. Shout. For the Lord has given you the victory. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to break loose in the Holy Ghost right now. We're going to close out passing the torch with the Holy Ghost meltdown. And we're going to be apostolic. And we're going to embrace this thing. Let me tell you what the Bible says. It says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. 
And listen to this. It says, praise him in the firmament of his power. What that means is you create an atmosphere. You create a firmament that the miraculous can breathe in. That miracles can breathe in. That people get the Holy Ghost in. That people get healed in. Fish breathe in water. Birds live in the air. People breathe oxygen. But God's people praise him in the firmament of his power. You enter into another dimension, into another realm. So I want somebody to praise him tonight like you know that you know that you know that he is able. What kind of church is this? What kind of church is this? What kind of church is this? It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a
Church is this? It's an apostolic church. Well, it's a. Hey, 
Jesus, we've got a baptistry, we'll baptize you in the name of Jesus.
in the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I pray strength on my brother right now. Lord, you see the burden of Africa on my brother. I pray a special dimension of strength on him right now. God, you let no weapon formed against him prosper. You protect his life in the name of Jesus. In the name of, come on, church. Come on. God, let your angels guard him. God, let your angels bear him up. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh my God, receive the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody receive the Holy Ghost right now. That's it, receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Breaking out over here. 
it's breaking out over here. Yeah. 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 